Then there are those who said the Qur'an is created, I mentioned them. And does the Jahmiya cult, those people who say the Qur'an was created, do they exist today? Or is it, as I mentioned to you, they died with Ja'ad and Jahm, and maybe they died with Bishr as well, as assumed by a man named Yasser Qadi that you may have heard of, who is a graduate of Al-Medina University. He said that recently, he has said, that the Jahmiya were only a small handful of people with a weak voice that didn't have any real impact. About 50 in number at most. And the scholars refuted them and repelled their arguments. And so after they were repelled and there was no more need to refute them, they went on refuting them as kind of a scholarly rite of passage. And he indicates that it wasn't necessary. Meaning the Jahmiya were gone and there's no need for it. So as he says, even the Sahih al-Bukhari guy, that's, those are his words to refer to, the great Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, even the Sahih al-Bukhari guy in his Sahih, he put a chapter refuting the Jahmiya just to follow the tradition of refuting the Jahmiya and he makes it to seem as if there was no need for this at this time. In the middle of the third century, the Jahmiya were gone. So there's no need for people to come and continue refuting the Jahmiya. And he believes this to be something of guidance for the people as he uses it as an example of, uh, or as, as in his explanation of the hadith of 73 uh, sects. But let me draw your attention to the Risala, the master's thesis that was put forth in Medina by an author named Yasser Qadi, in the year 1424 to 1425 to get a master's degree from the University of Medina. His topic was the Jahmiya. The topic was the Jahmiya. And as is the case when you write on a topic, you explain in the beginning, in the introduction, why you chose the topic. So we'll let Yasser Qadi explain why he chose the topic of the Jahmiya, of Jahm ibn Safwan, wa maqalatuhu, and his statements. Jahm ibn Safwan, the head of the Jahmiya, and his positions. He said, the reasons for me choosing this are many, a number of issues. He said, firstly, أَنَّ جَهَمَ بْنَ صَفْوَانَ كَانَ لَهُ أَثَرٌ بَالِغٌ فِي انْحِرَافِ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْفِرَقِ الْإِسْلَامِيَّةِ He said, Jahm ibn Safwan had an extremely extensive effect on deviating so many of the various sects that ascribe to Islam. بَلْ لَا يَكَادُ يُوْجَدُ رَجُلٌ فِي تَارِيكَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ يُقَارِبُهُ فِي إِفْسَادِهِ He said, you, you were rarely, you would hardly be able to find a single man that caused so much corruption or came anywhere near to the corruption that he caused amongst the Muslims in the history of Islam. قَالَ الْإِمَامِ ibn al-Qayyim And he mentioned the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim وَعَامَةُ الْبِدْعَةِ الْمُحْدَةَ فِي أُصُولِ الدِّينِ مِنْ قَوْلِ هَاتَيْنَ الطَائِفَتَيْنَ الْجَهْمِيَّةِ وَالْقَدَرِيَّ and the majority of all innovations that have been invented in the foundations of the religion are from these two groups, the Jahmiya and the Qadariya. وَنَقْرَ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ كَلَامَ بَعْوِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ فِيهِ And Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam, he mentions some words of the people of knowledge about uh, him, Jahm. مَا أَعْلَمُ مِمَّنْ تَكَلَّمَ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ قَوْمًا أَخْبَثَ مِنْ كَلَامِهِمْ I don't know any people who spoke about Islam any group of people who are more filthy in their speech than them. If tamakkana min budr juduri maqalat al ta'atir, as they were able to plant the seeds of ta'atir to reject the attributes of Allah, wal qawli bi khalq al Quran, and they were able to bring about this statement of the Quran being created, wa inkar al ulu, and to negate Allah's loftiness, meaning saying He's everywhere. Wal irja'i, and to excuse actions from iman, and to consider iman complete without actions. Wal jabr, and to uh, consider a person forced into his actions having no free will about qadr, uh, a deviation in qadr. Wa ghayri dhalika min al bid'ah, from uh, other kinds of innovation that he brought. Lida kana jadiran, going back to Yasser Qadi, he says. Thus, كان جدير أن يبحث دور هذا المبتدع وأثره أو هذا المبتدع وأثره في انحراف الفرق الإسلامي. Thus, it was befitting that it's this innovator specifically is to be researched about how his deviation uh, reached the various sects. And he said, going on, 
ظن كثير من الناس أن أراء الجهم بادت واندثرت. There are some people who think they assume falsely that the opinions of Jahm have gone away and worn away, and they're gone, no longer remaining. ولم يبقى لها وجود في زماننا, and they have no remaining presence in our time. بيدي أن الأمر على عكس من ذلك. Yasser Qadhi says, in reality, it is the opposite of that. حيث توافرت الفرق الكلامية أقوال جهم وتقاسمتها فيما بينهم. Where the, uh, the, the rhetorical groups, those based on rhetoric and speech and philosophy, they have divided up his inheritance and all taken something amongst themselves. فالبحث عن ضلالاته وبيان فساد مقالته so then to research his deviation and how bad his statements were and how corrupt they were, أمرٌ أساسي. It is a foundational matter. للرد على جميع الفرق الكلامية in order to refute all of the different sects that are that base their you know their their way of thinking on rhetoric. So the old Yasser Qadi from ten years ago believed very very firmly. That refuting the Jahmiya was an essential, basic, fundamental, uh, you know, uh, uh, way of protecting the correct aqidah and keeping the Muslims safe in their religion. And we see that he has retracted and changed. And we ask Allah Taala for guidance that is not something we retract and trade in for something else. We ask Him for guidance that remains with us until we die. Ask you to go for further guidance to a website called Ashadis.com. Ashadis.com, maintained, set up and maintained by our brother Dr. Amjad Rafiq. Also, the book Al Qawaid Al Muthla will refute the modern day Jahmiyas, the Asha'ira. They are essentially Jahmiya of today. Uh, it is a book written by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymeen, published by our brothers at Troy. These two resor- resources are excellent in understanding the claims of the Ash'aris and how we can respond to them and how we can get past their points of confusion.